What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network here for the reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the principals and associates of this great organization, as well as the founding sponsors. Today, newsletter number 49 on June 5th, 2019. This week's newsletter describes the proposed airlay protocol that could significantly reduce the overhead of relaying unconfirmed transactions between nodes, summarizes an executive briefing by BitRefill CEO Sergei Kotliar about Lightning Network, and lists some re recent changes to the COSHV proposal described last week. Also included are our regular sections on BEC32 sending support and notable code changes in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items, none this week. News, the early proposed. A new paper by Glab Naukemko, Peter Woolley, Gregory Maxwell, Sasha Fedorova, and Ivan Beshantasnik described an alternative transaction relay protocol, early. Currently, when a node learns about a new transaction that passes its relay policy, it announces the transaction ID of the transaction to all of its peers, except any peers that announced it previously. This is a very simple and effective policy, but it's not efficient. Most of the announcements a node receives are announcements for transactions it has already learned about from a different peer a few moments before. Redundancy that wastes about 44% of all node bandwidth, according to the paper. The paper attempts to reduce that redundancy using the author's early protocol, with a separate relaying into two phases, a fan-out phase and a reconciliation phase. In the fan-out phase, a node will only directly announce new transactions it has learned about to a maximum of eight peers selected from the node's outbound peers. If the reconciliation phase, a node will periodically request from each of its outbound peers a sketch of such transactions identifiers, short IDs, for all of the new transactions that peer would normally announce to the node. Sketches are created using the lib mini sketch library described in newsletter 26, which implements a high bandwidth efficient set reconsolidation technique based on error correction codes. Upon receipt of a requested sketch, the node itself also generates a sketch of all the new transactions that it would normally announce to its peer. The node combines its sketch with the peer's sketch to produce a list of any differences between the sketches. That different tot contains the short transaction IDs of any transactions that are in one set of new transactions, but not the other. The node can then request any transactions it does not have from that peer and proceed to querying its next peer for their peer sketch. This is repeated for a new peer once at each second, allowing the node to quality receive any transactions it did not receive via a fan out announcement. This simple two step protocol of fan out and reconciliation describes the primary operation of early. The remaining parts of the protocol described and analyzed in the paper cover the optimal parameter to use for the sketches and a series of fallback steps to take if a particular attempt at a set rec reconsolidation fails. After describing the early protocol, the paper analyzes its performance using both a simulated network of 60,000 nodes similar in number and use to the current Bitcoin network, and a live set of 100 nodes spread internally or internationally across several data centers. The most notable result is that early reduces the amount of bandwidth used to announce the existence of new transactions by 84%. However, it does take about 80%, 2.6 seconds, longer for transactions to proc. Uh, uh, propagate to all of the nodes in the network. It's still the case that Bitcoin transactions can only be confirmed once every 10 minutes on average. So a three second slowdown seems like a reasonable price to pay for a major, major reduction in bandwidth. 
having established that the protocol is a worthwhile efficiency improvement, the paper considers the most important of its security assumptions, its effect on privacy. Currently, each Bitcoin core node slightly delays the relaying of transactions to its peers. This makes it more difficult to spy on nodes to using timing correlations to guess that the first peer they received a transaction from is the peer that has created the transaction. Multiple simulations were run testing the effectiveness of the current relay protocol against the effectiveness of early for various amounts of spy nodes amongst network peers, from 5% of spy nodes to 60% spy nodes. In cases where the spy nodes were public nodes accepting incoming connections, early always performed as well or better than the current protocol. In cases where the spy nodes were private nodes making connections to honest nodes, early sometimes performed better and sometimes performed worse, but never more than 10% worse than, uh, than its worst case in an unlikely situation. The paper also notes that early is compatible with the proposed BIP-156 Dandelion protocol for further improving the network's resistance to spy nodes. Consider future possible changes to Bitcoin, Bitcoin relay policy. The paper notes that an increase in the number of outbound peers from 8 to 32 would only increase the bandwidth used by a node to announce the existence of new transactions by 32%, with early compared to 300% using the current protocol. As described in the paragraph above about early's two phases, new transactions would still only be fanned out via direct announcement to eight peers, but nodes would perform set re reconciliation with all 32 peers. A four-fold increase in relay connectivity improves the chance that time-sensitive transactions for contract protocols like Lightning Network will make it to miners quickly. In addition to, to lip mini sketch, the code changes necessary to implement early in Bitcoin Core amounts to only 584 lines of code. And the CPU intensive part of set reconsolidation has been benchmarked to take less than a millisecond under conditions that are worse than expected in practice. If no objection is raised over the paper, now Menko has announced his intention to write a BIP and work to get early included in a subsequent version of Bitcoin Core. The method used for transaction relay is part of the peer to peer network protocol not a consensus rule. So the change could begin operations as soon as multiple users upgrade to it. Although we expect nodes will also include a backwards compatible mode to suppose peers to support peers who have not upgraded. Presentation, operation on Lightning. BitRefill CEO Sergey Kotliar gave a presentation about Lightning Network for the Optech executive briefing last month. The video is now available. Kotliar begins by explaining that high transaction fees during previous years have a significant effect on bid refills business. So they made a special effort to, uh, to get really good at minimizing fee-related expenses. The ability to receive Lightning Network payments supported that goal. And he believes they were the first service on mainnet to sell real items for Lightning Network payments. Today, Lightning Network payments represent about 5% of their sales, similar to the amount of business they do using Ethereum. He believes it's important for businesses to start working on Lightning Network now. In Bitcoin, we've gotten used to waiting for things, but making customers wait an unknown amount of time creates a risk that the customer will go away. For example, by the time a deposit clears at an exchange, the customer may no longer be interested in making the trade that would have earned an exchange a commission. Additionally, BitRefill's experience with Lightning Network is that Lightning Network's improved invoicing eliminates a number of different payments errors seen with on-chain Bitcoin payment, including overpayments, underpayments, stack transactions, and copy and paste errors, and other problems. 
receiving payments over Lightning Network also eliminates the need to consolidate UTXOs and reduces the need to rotate money between hot and cold wallets. Eliminating all of these problems has the potential to significantly reduce customer support and backend expenses. In a particular interesting section of his talk, Kotliar shows how perhaps as much as 70% of current on-chain payments are using are users moving money from one exchange to another exchange, or even between different users of the same exchange. If all the activity could be moved off-chain using the Lightning Network payments, exchanges and their users could save a considerable amount of money and everyone in Bitcoin would benefit from the increase in available block space. Kotliar concludes his talk with a few short segments. He describes that software and services BitRefill sees Lightning Network users using today and what he expects them to be using in the future. He then explains two of BitRefill's services for Lightning Network users, including businesses. Thor and Thor Turbo. Finally, he briefly describes several planned improvements to Lightning Network, reusable addresses. See newsletter 30. Splicing in and out. See number 22. And larger channels. See also number 22. Overall, Kotliar made a compelling case that Lightning Network's faster speed, lower fees, and improved invoicing means businesses that expect to remain competitive serving Bitcoin customers in the near future should start working on implementing Lightning Network support today. COSHV proposed proposal replaced. The author of COSHV proposal we described last week has replaced it with a similar proposal under a different name. The new proposal checks more than just the hash of transaction output. Now the hash also includes the transaction's version number, number of inputs, sequence number, and lock time. This change eliminates concerns related to the transaction malleability that would have affected using the opcode with some types of contract protocols, such as Lightning Network. Additionally, by hashing the number of inputs allowed in the transaction, the original proposal restrictions on just one input is lifted. However, the proposal warns that only allowing a single input is still recommended to avoid unwanted in, in interactions. Note, except for the name, new name, the changes do not affect the summary of COSHV we wrote last week. Optech recommends. As of this writing, the Bitcoin core project currently has over 300 open pull requests. Some of these are work in progress, but most of the rest are waiting for developers to review them and either identify any problems that need to be fixed or acknowledge that they're ready to be merged. If you want to help Bitcoin core improve by reviewing pull requests, but aren't sure how to get started, we recommend you check out the Bitcoin Core Pull Request Review Club. In a weekly IRC meeting, an experienced Bitcoin Core contributors provides background information about selected pull requests and then answer live questions from new contributors. Often, they are assisted by other established Bitcoin Core contributors, including sometimes the author of the pull request being discussed. Optech recommends attendance to any engineer who wants to get more involved into the Bitcoin Core process. IRC meetings are held at 1700 UTC on Wednesdays. Back 32 sending support. Week 12 of 24 in a series about allowing the people you pay to access all of SegWit's multiple benefits. Have time, baby. This segment marks halfway through our series about Back32. So we decided to have some fun with this week to describe some Back32 related trivia that's interesting but not important enough for its own segment. How is Back32 pronounced? Peter Woolley, co-author of the proposal, uses a soft CH so that the word sounds like Bash32. This name is prominent that mixes the letters of the addresses error correction code BCH into the name of its numeric base in back 32 base 32 
pronouncing it with a soft ch allows the first uh, syllable of bash 32 to be similar into bitcoin's legacy format in base 58 the admin is extended uh, ex explanation ruins the joke but it's a clever and ambiguous way of a bit of wordplay and i encourage you to watch this video for further context uh, bch has not has nothing to do with bitcoin cash ticker code the name of the bch code back 32 is based upon are an abbreviation of bose jauduri hos kenkem with Hans Kemkem inventing this type of cyclic code in 1959, followed by Bose and Ray Chaudhry independently rediscovering it in 1960. Moreover, the BAC32 address format was announced in March 2017, three months before the first plans for what would later be labeled the Bitcoin Cash, <coughs> Bcash, uh, which initially planned to use the ticker code BCC, BitConnect. Over 10 CPU years consumed. Using existent information about BCH codes, the authors of BAC32 uh, were able to find the set of codes that provide the minimum amount of error detection they desire for Bitcoin addresses. However, they were almost 160,000 eligible codes in the set, and the author expected some of them to be better than others. To find the best code among them, over 200 CPU cores and more than 10 years of computing time was used. Notable code and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, C Lightning, Eclair, Libsec P256 K1, and Bitcoin improvement proposals. This Bitcoin Core change speeds up importing keys, addresses, and other information into the wallet using the import multi RPC by batching the database updates and rather than making them sequentially. In a test performance by the PR author, this reduces the time to import 10,000 addresses from 465 seconds to 4 seconds. This LND change waits to relay gossip announcements until they are there at least 10 and then sends them 5 seconds have elapsed since the previous batch, reducing bandwidth overhead. This con continues to work done by LND and other implementations towards reducing the overhead of the gossip protocol given the significant growth in the size of the Lightning Network over the past year. And this LND change switches to using a persistent state machine for routed payments and to storing some additional state data for the machine, improving the program's ability to correctly handle HTLCs that were unresolved when the daemon was restarted. Peers, you got to subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Thank you again to all the founding sponsors and contributors to this great organization. Thank you very much also to your support on the telecom. And if you want to uh, reach out, the contact details are on towardsliberty.com. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.